Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. This is going to be an electronic journey. That's all I can tell you. Greg is here. Uh, Greg has Greg's, Greg's Guide Service. He's selling these hats. I don't know if he's selling the hats. He's giving me one. We can sell. So, it, um, but anyway, yeah, we're going to uh, we put that right there. But uh, brand new. I'm that aware might be that nice as prices they are nowadays. People will be out there. I'll be fishing if they come by and. If I'm not catching anything, I'll just say my name's Greg. That's right. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> say my name's Brad. That's okay. <laughs> we got to figure it out. But electronics, it's 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 like people are are done freaked out over this. That uh, is for sure. Electronics and people putting units and stuff on. But as we were talking about before, some of the guys now are running live scope on the back of their boat like their transom and running that besides their is it ever going to stop one in the front <laughs> i don't know if it's going to stop you know uh yeah. in days in days before live scope got um going boats vessels that were in uh salt water they actually had sonar that was built into the hull that went forward, forward yes. so it, it wasn't like <laughs> rocket scientists right. when they did it they just were able to do it garmin was able to do it better mm -hmm. and then they were able to put the application there but when you're doing and you do installs have you seen very many people uh installing the sonar in the back or is I have not yet, not uh, yet. i do know that uh, it's getting big on the bass side of the world uh -huh. most of our stuff is crappie crappie uh, you know people uh -huh. around here but uh not too many people uh right now as far as the back of the boat it's breaks 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 breaks, oh, breaks. that's all everybody's yeah. thinking about and worried about right now but uh they, i've been seeing to where some of the pros on the bass side are putting one on each side so in other words yeah. they got three yeah live scopes on their boat and some of them's got four let's because they have the pan. one on the trolling motor let's right. have a one on the turret and then they have the one the true whatever it's called yep and, and then they have one on each side of the jack plate so basically from what i can understand is your there's a company making a bracket yep that that live scope will fit into so instead of having side imaging, looking out both sides at 80 feet or whatever, right. which they still have that, I'm sure, uh, but they, they turn that live scope on and they get better detail and what they're looking at as they scan the waters yeah. to see where they want to fish for the pre-fishing. Yeah, it could be pre-fishing, but because this is so new and most of the people that have it haven't released it, it could be something where they're turning that front transducer to the side, and if they are 80 feet away from the shore, that would, with two units with live scope garments, because we're talking about 20-degree cones. Yeah, they're looking beams, at almost the whole side. Then they're looking at the it. whole side, so they could see the whole side yes. of what they're fishing. And so, but if they were... If they're going, the fact is that side scan is a very narrow beam as it goes out and it slices through the back from one side to the other and covers a very small right. slice and goes. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is you got to be moving for it to work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what's the insanity of three uh, live scopes uh, in your thing when it comes to power? Like, so if you have three of them, that means well, you're running three boxes and you're running three units just for those. Yeah, those people are running them strictly on a lithium. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably a 100 amp hour minimum. Minimum. Uh, Jeez. There's a few companies, uh, uh, Militech, right. they have 135 and 190 amp now. Oh, so going to need them. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, by the time you run four graph or – Four graphs and three live scopes, you're going to need a minimum of 100 amp hours. 100 amp hours. To be able to run all day. What does a normal 12-inch uh, Garmin, uh, how many amp hours? Uh, 2.5? What's, what's Something the amp like hour that. use? Yeah, it's uh, the uh, the draw on it's just under two. Just under two. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize the actual 12-inch screen will actually draw more amperage 
than your live scope black box. Wow. And they they think it's the other way around, but it's right. it, it, to some of them aren't. How about crosstalk? A lot of people will be like, am I going to get crosstalk? I see, I'm not real sure on that because, I, I mean, you would think that they would, but I haven't seen enough of it yet <laughs> to see what's really going to go on. It's going to be interesting. So it's, it's interesting because of what the limits are of it's going to go to so you're a crappie guide Mm -hmm. and you've seen the development of electronics as you you started all the way from the beginning of this deal right and have gone through and so how many units how many black boxes and uh how many live scopes you have on yours currently i just have the one (laughs) currently just have the one just the one Mm -hmm. would you get another one for crappie fishing or do you think that's a bass fishing deal well, I have thought about it at a time or two. All I right. mean, I have, uh, I have, I have a whole live scope system in my shop right now. Right. Uh, when I went from the thirty-two to the thirty-four, right. I never did get rid of my my uh, thirty-two. I still have it. Right. And I kept it for more than reasons of just keeping it in case I need it. Right. Um, it has been very handy on troubleshooting. For people's problems, uh-huh. uh, I yeah. had a guy just literally a month ago. Uh, he just called me, and his live scope was messing up, and he wasn't seeing this, and wasn't doing that. He's cutting off and cutting on, and right. I said your transducer's bad. He said, "No, man, don't tell me that." I said, "Transducer's going bad." He said, well, "I think it's black box." I said, "I got both right here in the shop. Come and get them. Take them out on the lake." And I said, but take the transducer first right? and put it on and see what happens. And he fished three hours and never had a problem with it. So he had, oh. to, he had to give me a new transducer. Yeah. So it's been real handy to have for stuff like that. that and I, right. I actually not, had not thought yet. about putting – and what I thought about doing was putting one on the barrel of the troll motor. Yeah. And then bring the other one up on the shaft and put it in perspective mode right. and leave it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people but doing that. I, I don't know. It's just a lot of stuff on the boat. You know? How about in the back? You troll crankbaits, so do I. How about in the back, run yours off the back, and you're trolling crankbaits so you can well, see Well, that would them. be kind of hand. That would, that you might, could at least see if they were biting nice. that color. Because, you know, I, I do happen to know Pico Lures has... 42 new colors oh, yeah. now, or 42 colors, two new ones. Well, as far as on the live scope this last year, I was trolling one particular incident. I don't know if I ever told you, but we were trolling, and uh, I seen, I, when I first seen it out in front of the boat, I thought, man, that's a big, big crappie there if it's crappie. And then I got to notice, and it was a catfish. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I know how far my lines are right so right. i have an 18 footer and a 14 footer you know uh-huh. a 10 foot pole and then just a six footer and uh so i i would stay on the fish and i'd look over and i'd keep the boat i kept that boat where he's roughly 16 18 feet off to the side uh-huh and i would like i said i'd check on him and finally he got close enough to the boat i couldn't check on him no longer to keep going and I'll be doggone if that catfish did not hit that first pole, that eighteen footer. <laughs> we call it a ten pound. A ten, See, you need a second ten pound blue cap. You need a second live scope so, on your boat. There you go, out to the yeah. side. Yeah, I don't know. I, you don't. Do you I, think I do pretty well with what I have? The question is, do you think other uh, crappie fishermen will though? Oh, well, it's very possible. Uh, I mean, what would be the advantage? Let's just play the devil's advocate. What What would be the advantage of having two there? We already know the disadvantage. It would be nice is, to have them for to uh, scan and and looking for you know, but whether it be bus piles or or schools of fish, right? Uh, as you're just idling along, I don't think that I'd want it fishing with it. But, I mean, everybody's got their own opinion, you know. You think that's because. You're fishing mostly the same lake, mm-hmm. not going to different spots. Yeah. Or, could you? Can you install? I mean, on the trolling, I guess you could put the baits back there where you could actually see them. That's what I'm saying. Like get one of those turnips and just 
point it, you know, like point it or have the person in the back of the boat, yeah. like point it to the yeah. crankbaits. Right. Well, it's kind of a thought. It's a thought. You still have to connect your foot to the uh, trolling motor exactly. or, or your control. Remote, right? uh, yeah, like remote or or I use the digital screen on my on my unit to control my my trolling motor, yeah. which is kind of neat. You know, you tell it how fast to go. Yeah, I don't know. Direction. Like I said, I, I think the bass industry is going to be harder on that. It's kind of like the brakes now. Yes. They've been called copy brakes because that's who been using them, and now they got bass brakes. Bass brakes. So, yeah, you know what the difference of those are? They probably cost them more because <laughs> they <laughs> call them bass brakes. I think after their first year and they see the guys have them, I think um, – I think every boat will have bass. But as far as the the electronics, as far as general electronics, I mean, one, there's so many people aren't going to spend that kind of money to to have the the next one on the back. Uh Their main theory and their main thought is, hey, I want to get a live scope and try it. Right. So as far as the general person, general fisherman, you and I, uh, you know, we're kind of out of that because we use it as a different tool. Right. So the thing on LifeScope is uh, there's so many people out here that's buying this product, and some of them are even very frustrated with it. Right. Because they're not catching the fish that they see somebody else catching or whatever. Uh. And uh, I had a gentleman call me not too long ago, and no. Uh, he was real frustrated and was going to sell his. And I told him, I said, look, your electronics is only as good as you allow your electronics to be. Right. The better you learn your electronics, the better you're going to understand your electronics and then you work them, the better it's going to do for you. And so he's like, well, okay. So what I'm saying is everybody's got in their mind that it's a plug and play. Right. And in one sense, it is. But there's four or five factors there that play a very important role. One is how accurate a caster are you. Right, Especially exactly. if you got a person that if people don't think that the cone is at 20 degrees. Yep. So if you drop it right here close, that's only that's, a, a foot wide, if that. That's you pretty know. narrow. And then you get on out there at... Uh, I think 10 feet is 10 foot range in front of you is what, three feet or something yep. like that? 3.6. And yep. then it pretty much doubles every 10. That's right. So, you know, if you're at 20 feet, that is only a seven foot cone. So you got to right. be accurate enough because if you're seeing that fish, one, you don't, you know, if the brighter it is, the better you are because you're you're on you're in the center. You're in the center. You're in the of center. The if it's uh-huh. it's fish real good and bright. If you're wondering if it's off to the side just a little bit, move your troll motor or your pole. Right. Move it just a little bit. If you turn it to the left and he goes out of the picture, then you need to bring it back to the right and get yeah. it in the center. The brighter the picture, the more the center it is. But if you've got a picture of a fish and it's fair, fairly bright and you throw it out there, if you don't hit that 10 foot, you're not going. Yeah. You're not even going to see your bait, and that's the biggest thing. People say, I don't even, can't even see my bait. So, you know, one, your accuracy of your cash, your understanding of what you are looking at, uh-huh. You've got to be able to understand uh, and and be able to see whether it's cover, what type of cover it is to the fish. You can even identify these fish if you get to watching it. Uh-huh, the species of fish. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then, then you got to understand, uh, to a degree, you still got to understand the behavior and pattern that fish. Right. Because we had talked about it earlier, dropping it right on them and them not moving, and then but in the summer when they're very active, you ain't dropping it and hitting them. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, there's times you can get that jig within a foot of them, and they're gonna come and knock the fool out of it. 
Uh-huh. Then the next time, you almost got to tap him on the <laughs> nose and say, wake up, here I am. Uh, but, and they don't, or the next time, they may not want it sitting still. They may want it to be moving. Yep. So you can cast and reel real slow. So it all it all comes together. But after all those, then the main thing to look at is your gain. Right. Color your, gain. Your, well, your, your gain, gain as then, far as the sensitivity, right. some uh-huh. people call. You got to do that. This water out here right now is muddy. <laughs> yeah. If you was fishing here yesterday and it was pretty clear and just barely dingy, you might be running on 70% gain. Right. But today you may only need 60, yeah. 65. So, it, you know, the watercolor changes that. But also what people don't realize is the depth range and right. the forward range has plays a big role in what you can see and what you can understand. And how big they are. Exactly. How big the fish and, are. You know, a lot of people run the grid so uh-huh. they can tell the size. I, I don't need the grid to tell how big it is. I mean, if you, if he's big, you're going to see it. But if you want the grid, run the grid. Right. But at the same token, then you can go in. And so let's just say you're running your gain – at say sixty five percent, right? Turn your color gain up to at least seventy percent, right? At least five over, five over what your gain it. is, uh-huh. if not ten, and that's making it pop. And that will make it pop. Yeah. That will make it come out and stand out. That that whatever you're looking at, it'll be a lot brighter, a lot better picture. A lot yeah. of people don't realize that. And you say pop, kind of reminds you of this stuff they come out with for. <laughs> oh, yeah. They pop. still do. Yeah. They, they, they still got, got bait pop. It. Yeah. Bait called. pop still comes And you put that there. on there and, and it, it will brighten your lure up better. But you can do that with color gain. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That so, makes sense. Anyway. So that's where a lot of people are, you know, I mean, that's even with using a long pole. If you right. cannot accurately place that, now I do pretty good until it goes to the side. Yeah. Especially the side I'm sitting on. I have a harder time getting in that cone right. than I would there. But at the same token, you take what we're talking about in the accuracy and you say you have a active target, which is Lawrence. Right. We're talking an 18, you're talking an 18 degree instead smaller of a 20 game. degree. So you're even not, smaller. Yeah. It's so, not much smaller, but it's small to the point of if you're kind two of Two degrees lax, makes a big difference. If you're a lackadaisical <laughs> fisherman or you're not very accurate or you're in places exactly. that have a lot of wind. I mean, and so I, I know range is, like range is, I played with 60 foot and 80 foot and I kind of go back and forth and it goes according to what I'm fishing for. Yeah. A lot you of know. people will take them. I see that. They, I see that 30 in every crappie I see is damn three pounds, Greg, yeah, three pounds, exactly. <laughs> but we're fishing here on Beaver Lake. I know they're not three pounds. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> some people will look at 60 to 80 feet out. Uh-huh. And as they get closer, they bring they bring it in. Oh. I usually just set mine at about 35 and just leave it. Right. Uh, once in a while, I'll go further out, depending on what I'm doing, fishing-wise. Right. If I'm spider rigging or something, I'll sometimes yeah, I can go see out bringing further, it. Uh-huh. You know, so it all depends, uh, you know, what you're mm-hmm. doing. A lot of people are like, well, why do you want live scope if you're spider rigging? Well... I want it for several reasons. <laughs> I mean, who would have ever thought we would have come out with a piece of equipment that we understand how many times we've fished over the years and we're getting these hits, but we're not getting no fish. Right. And we can sit right there on that live scope and watch them swim up there and hit the sinker. Right, yep. Instead of hitting the bait. Uh-huh. Well, there's why we're missing them. I've seen... A lot of the times we say we missed that fish, 
Right. We did not miss the fish. The fish missed you. That's right. Because you could watch it, even on a jig. I've seen them swim up there, and, you th- and you're ready. You're going to get a hook set. You feel it. You jerk because it's your natural right. instincts. But he didn't do nothing but brush it. He just brushed it. You can see that jig swinging over. <laughs> so there's a that's, lot of things there that we get right. to see that we never seen before. Exactly. Well, that takes us to Tackle Time. Tackle Time sponsored by Pico Lures. Of course, if you're out there live scoping, make sure you use our scope eye jigs because they're easier to see. They make the lure pop. Yeah, they <laughs> We've do. Been talking you can about actually popping. see that eye layer on the screen yeah, the, if you get it close enough. Yeah, Mitch has got some secret sauce that he somehow, <laughs> I guess, when he's making them and baking them, he puts it in there. I don't know. But I know, uh, I know they sell lots of them. And yeah. People love them, and they last a long time. So that's a real good option. But you can check all the jig heads or crankbaits and things like that. You can check them out at picolures.com. Greg, uh, if they want to go on a guide trip with you or if they want to learn about their electronics, yeah. where where would they go? Or you also do installations, yes, which sir. we did in another show, but you do installations. Yeah. Uh, How would they get in touch with you? Uh, 479-601-1683, or you can go on Facebook or Messenger, Instagram, and get a hold of me that way. All right, there you go. Like I always like to end the show, make sure you keep your hook sharp, sharp and your lures in the water. water.